Please welcome to the stage, President Angel Cabrera. Hey, encantada. Encantado, encantado. Thank you so much. I, I, there must be other Spaniards in the room after you said that and that you know, created a, an applause. I am uh, delighted to be here. By the way, I'm still recovering from uh, the incredibly exciting game today by our uh, women's basketball team. What an amazing game. What an amazing game. Yes, I am, I'm, I'm having so much fun with this team today. Actually, I'm having a lot of fun with all teams. I'll tell you w one, one thing. Uh, what these student athletes do, and I, I know this is preaching to the choir. I know you, you uh, everybody in this room gets this, but I think uh, sometimes the, the choir needs some preaching. Uh, so, uh, what these student athletes do is, is nothing short of extraordinary. Not only they need to be able to compete in one of the absolutely most competitive athletic conferences in the country, but they also need to be in the classroom with some of the best students in the country. I'll give you uh, some numbers on the, on the last part. Uh, we just went through the numbers of this round of, uh, of applications to come to Georgia Tech. Last year, we had a record year. We received 37,000 applications for a starting class of about 3,000 students. 37,000 applications from every state in the United States, from every country around the world. This year, we just closed the cycle with 41,000 applications. So some people like to compare us with, um, with MIT and other, other engineer schools. So, well, I'll tell you what, our students could be in their classrooms and do just fine. If you think about their capability to do sports, I think they may have seen a photo of a football in a, in a student catalog at some point in time. Uh, to do these two things at the same time is not easy. In fact, it's very, very rare to find the talent of a young person that can do those two things at the same time. If we find that rare talent and somehow we cannot get that person in because of lack of resources. It's not their problem, it's ours. We have let this amazing talent, this amazing potential go to waste. So this is a day we get together, yes, for our students, scholarship recipients to say thank you to their donors, but this is the dirty little secret for our, the scholarship recipients, which is, we do this, and those of us who actually give money in scholarships, for a couple of reasons. Number one is because we all know we would not be where we are if someone at some point in our lives had not helped us go to school. I would not be here. I landed here 28 years ago with two suitcases from Madrid, Spain, because I got a Fulbright scholarship to go to grad school in the United States. Without that, my life would have been very, very different. We know that without the scholarship, most of you could not be doing what you're doing. The second reason we do it is, it is enlightened self-interest. If in a society there is someone with potential and that potential goes unfulfilled, we all lose. The third is, we just like to live vicariously through you. <laughs> Since, really, we cannot run those 400 meters or, or throw the ball or whatever, the next best thing we can do is help someone who do it for us and we can watch it from the stands and have a grand time. <laughs> Listen, whatever the motivation, what I want to say is, uh, it is really, really unbelievable, the talent that is in this room, the talent that is concentrated in this place. We do not take it for granted. And that concentration of talent would not, we would not have the people we have in this room if it weren't for the commitment of our donors who believe in the mission of this place, who believe in the potential of our students. And for that, I say thank you and keep coming back and bring your friends. Uh, we want to break more records. Thank you so much.